Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the General Hospital Weekly Recap of June 8th through 12th. And I kind of want to get started on a couple thoughts that I had. First of all, I re-listened to my half of Michael Easton, and I just want to apologize. I feel like I was all over the place <laughs> listening to it. But at the same time, it might have made sense to some people because they weren't thinking what I was thinking as I was listening to it. Because I knew what I was trying to... So Right. I get what you're saying. Yes. I forgot to mention Lucy freaking out on Silas was because we were talking about that with how she did the same thing with Stephen Clay. Yes. So Rafe and Sam walked into Kelly's oh. and she starts freaking out and she's like, you guys need to get away. And so, I mean, it was very similar. She didn't drive a stake through his heart well, at that time. Well, that's good. I'm glad that she's to. learned a little lesson. And I had an aha moment about my want for Finn to be autistic. Okay. Two things. Maybe they dropped the Roxy being a support animal because they realized that it really couldn't be a thing. And some of the stuff that they were saying isn't accurate. Mm -hmm. And also there's a whole, an autistic actor could portray an autistic doctor. Right. And that's something that, you know, I mean, my daughter attends film camp, you know, <laughs> like they are actors. So I'm, I want them to create a character, but they should have an actually autistic person be the actor, which is yes something that I thought about. And to my knowledge, I don't know if Michael Easton is anywhere. I mean, Dan Aykroyd is, you know, stuff like that. Right. But, well, who was it? Um, oh my gosh, I just posted about it. Who was Hannibal Lecter? Are you really asking me a movie something and you want a real name? I still Anthony call, Hopkins. I was going to say, I still call half the soap characters by their character names, even when I know their real names. Anthony Hopkins was diagnosed at 70. And he's like, it explains a lot of my life. And obviously, he's kind of done some good things. So we can get an actually autistic person to portray an autistic character. Yes. And but if Michael need... Easton is, then I apologize. And they should have made him. And they need to keep that character around. Yes. Not just have oh. what... Two months or whatever. What was Liz's friend on? It was like two months. Right. Terry. And yeah. then Amy's brother, Chaz. Chaz? Chet? Chet. Chet. You know, he's an actual amputee veteran. You see him a little more often, though, because he's the bartender. But why don't we have more stories with him? Well, I agree. Because we should put him in a love story. So they can have Maxie break up with Peter whenever she realizes what a jerk he is. And there, then we did can... think that she was going to go for yes. Chet for a and while. You're right. For Chet. Yes. Finally. Because he is an actual good guy. Well, we don't know because we didn't really get to meet him. Right. We saw him through his drug struggles, his drug addiction struggles from, what was it? It was from the, his surgeries, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know why they didn't develop that more. So those were my couple of thoughts that I had since last week. And after having listened to the show on Thursday, I apologize if no one could follow me when I was talking about my half of my Easton. I didn't re-listen to you. I'm sorry. That's so okay. I realized a mistake that I made whenever we were talking about Martin Gray. You said he was on One Life to Live. And I was like, yeah. No, he no, was on my children. He was on all my children. Oh, so, yeah. And I've, I've said that like two or three times. But in my head, I know that because I even said tab the cab. Like he's, it's all about all my children. But oh, you have no idea how many, how many catches that I, I hear things <laughs> and I go, no, it's not right. <laughs> but we know it. And so I feel like if people listen to the show consistently, they've heard us talk about this thing previously and yes. they're like what did they just do <laughs> that must make it interesting it's like easter eggs find the crazy mistakes that we make exactly that we don't realize we make until we hear it later but yeah that kind of came to me the other day just out of nowhere i was like why did i say that that's not right it's all my children i know it's all my children and there's, there's a good chance you said all my children i don't think we'll so. just have to go back and listen i think i know the fan interview hasn't played yet but i know you said it in the fan interview and i agreed with you and then i was like no that's wrong it's well, so all my she. children so there we spoiler go spoiler alert we have our fan of the month on this thursday and his love interest on all my children is married in real life to the man that plays kevin oh mm -hmm. Oh, I like when that stuff together. happens. Yes. I won't, like, we don't need to get into all that because that could be a 411 for another day. But yes, I just realized that mistake. I guess. Well, good. This was our, <laughs> sorry, we mess up. 
<laughs> sorry we're human. This is the sorry we're human section <laughs> of the podcast. And we just don't know everything. How we talk about pretty frequently. Yeah. We do the best we can. We're gonna mess up. We're entertaining, even if we're messing up. So we're good. Exactly. So what do you want to get started on? Mm, I wasn't as annoyed with Ned and Olivia this year as I was with the prior year because their setting fit the song instead of like last week when it didn't go together in my opinion. So they sang What's So Wrong About Peace, Love and Understanding yes. by Elvis Costello and I commented that Olivia was channeling her inner Davy Jones with her little sway back and forth. It was just like Daydream Believer. <laughs> and wasn't she playing a tambourine? And Davy Jones played a tambourine. Yes. So yay Davy Jones. There you go. I'm not going to go on a rant the way that you did about Grace. Because <laughs> it wasn't as disturbing, so you don't need to. Oh, and we asked why that award was only one time. Yes. Maybe it was only one time because it went so horribly wrong. Yes, I was thinking the same thing as well. <laughs> okay. Oh, that was just so heartbreaking to watch, though, because... And that's the Finn and Anna that we love. That is the Finn and Anna that we love, and I felt like Alexis was overreacting. Once again... She composes herself when she wants to in a very grown-up manner. She's getting this award. Her daughter is presenting her with it. She's not going to run off stage like that. She's going to come out and accept it and then afterwards turn to him and be like, hey, seriously, you're a big jerk. Yeah. <laughs> but I did like that Molly stood up for her because she went over to Finn afterwards and was like, stay away from my mom. You're a jerk. I might be a little old fashioned with it. No, you are all for Sam sticking up for Molly, but you're not going to be for Molly sticking up for Alexis? Sam sticking up to a peer, someone who's her same age, whereas Molly is telling off an adult. But Molly's an adult too at this point. Not the same. No, I think in this case it was totally allowable. But Finn didn't really... Okay. And she didn't he freak out her. on him. She was just like... He hurt her, jerk. but he didn't do anything for... He didn't pull a knife on her. He didn't... <laughs> I don't think you can compare one boyfriend to the other. But if she says that to Julian, then yeah, he's a jerk for trying well, she's to kill him. him too, so. Right. But for Finn, just realizing that... I felt like it was more the fact that it was at the nurse's ball. You just humiliated her. Yeah. I know she did it to herself, but you caused her to humiliate herself in front of everyone. She should have been more adult, but since she wasn't, I was fine with Molly standing up for her. So... Oh, and then why did they pull over whenever Maxie's water broke? I don't know, because there is time. And no matter what, don't you want to be as close to the hospital as possible? If you were pregnant right now and said, no, we're not going to make it to the hospital, I'm still going to get you in that direction as close as I can. And it's not like when Felicia had her, or no, had Georgie right. at Luke's, where she had been in labor all day. Yes. Maxie was like, oh, I'm not feeling comfortable. And you and I have both been pregnant. Like, it's an, at least in our experience. Right. It's not like her water broke while they were at the nurse's ball and they were on their way to the hospital and she's like, oh, shoot. Yes. This kid's coming out. Exactly. It was... Very instantaneous. And I'm the 2018 Nurses Ball to me is making me remember why we like certain people mm -hmm. and why it's also really annoying what they've yes. done to certain people. Yes. So like Finn declaring his love for Anna happened in 2018 and then he proposed in 2019 at the Nurses Ball, which I thought was cute. But like the way that he, they talked to each other, the yes. there was passion, there was chemistry. And now it's just like, yeah. You know, it's like they're already married and they're not married yet. And like they've been married a hundred years. There right. is no chemistry left there. And Peter delivering James was an amazing turning point for him. Mm -hmm. You know, and it really, really was. Why did we have to take him backwards? Right. His whole reaction during that whole thing. Yes. And Maxie's really good with knowing what to do during. For only having one kid previously. Heck yeah. Well, she was a candy stripe. Yes. But I don't know how much they do I don't know do how much they do flavor and delivery, no. Did she ever <laughs> deliver a kid? I don't think so. I don't think so either. It's usually the baby daddies or some random guy. Can you clarify when you're talking about baby daddies? that? Because I noticed that you do say it a lot. And I'm like, okay, for those that don't speak Amanda, please explain when you're saying baby daddy what you are referring to. It's the baby's dad. Everybody knows what baby daddy is. But that's not really how a lot of people take it. If you're not married to the person... That's your baby daddy. Okay. It's not a bad term. It's it's but it's used as a bad term so much. Oh, I don't mean it. No, I don't mean That's it. That's what I'm saying yeah, is no. Amanda is not trying to say that as No, no judgment here. I have a baby daddy and then I have an ex husband that is now just a baby daddy because we're not married. See, I don't call mine baby daddy. Oh. I mean I don't 
like use it all the time but yeah. in soap world there's a lot of baby daddies so i feel like it's an appropriate term there but uh, no i don't mean it as a derogatory in any way i just wanted to clear that up yeah because i noticed it it was a lot in probably elizabeth <laughs> yes i think that's who we were talking <laughs> because about again she has three baby daddies yes that's a lot is lucky baby daddy yeah he's aiden yeah but they were married when she had him but now they're not and she wasn't sure them. and she wasn't sure of his paternity i don't know that that counts Okay, we're not going to get into the logistics of baby daddiness. <laughs> but yes, that's the bottom line. I don't mean it as a bad term. I just mean there's lots of times that the child's father delivers the baby on the soaps. Or some, or random, some guy. random guy. Well, because, oh my gosh, we just talked about this. Who delivered Georgie? Kevin. Mm-hmm. Right. And Tony. Tony. Oh, right. Kevin talked to her. That's Kevin, what we said. Kevin, Kevin talked should, her through. In our opinion, Kevin should have delivered because it's weird to have your brother-in-law down there. But at the same but, time, he is a doctor in that way. Whereas Kevin's a, like a neurological doctor. I feel like doctor. they still have that regular training. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. You want to go to medical school and we can figure this out? <laughs> I could just add on to my student loan debt. It'd be great. You don't have to go to medical school to learn how to have it. My ex is an EMT. He delivered it. Okay. I mean, you could deliver a baby. You don't even have to have any training. Apparently, Maxie knows what she's doing and she's only had one. Okay. I don't feel like I could do it on my own. I feel like I would freak out. I feel like there's always situations, though, that you don't think you'd handle it as well as you do until you're in the moment. True. I guess if you were in it, you'd have to. Yeah. But she was very, like when she told him to check if it was feet or head, feet or head. If it's feet, that's bad. If it's head, that's good. I would be screaming, make sure it's in the right position. Right. Not explaining so thoroughly. So good job, Maxie. <laughs> Don't you hate when you're listening to a great podcast and suddenly you're interrupted by an ad? I know. Thank goodness Stitcher lets us listen to our favorite podcasts like Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend, My Favorite Murder, and many more ad-free for only $4.99 a month or $34.99 a year. Go to stitcher.com slash premium to sign up today. Use promo code PEER54 for one month free on us. Do you have an idea for a podcast but don't know where to start? Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Anchor is such an easy way to record and edit a podcast, and you can do it from either your phone or computer. Best part is you don't have to worry about getting it out there. Anchor distributes to many platforms, so you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and many more. You can start making money right away without having a minimum number of listeners, too. Anchor really is everything that you need to make a podcast all in one place. Oscar and Joss saying, I never knew. And did you know that that was actually written by General Hospital Director Fido Xavier? I did know that just because I really like that song. He also wrote another one. He also wrote a list of things to do. Okay. Which Joss sang. Yes. In 2019. So I love both of those. Very multi talented. Yeah. I mean, songwriting is not easy. Mm -mm. No, I really like that song though. And it was the same cellist in 2018 and 2019. It's Christine Wu. To accompany Valentine. Very nice. I wanted to know. I won't call you a dork this time because that was fun information. I did like the Oil of Olay product placement with Olivia and Kim was definitely more real conversation. It was more real conversation. I felt Until like the end. Could have cut a line or two yeah. out. Could have been a little shorter and it would have been more believable. Right. Just, oh, like I love when, that stuff. I use Kim's it like, all the time. but do you see it here? Yeah. You know, like that's real. But yes. Olivia saying it, well, you won't even be able to see, you know, or something. It's like, ah, come on, cheesy. Yeah. Mike. It was so cute though. So cute. So good. Again, I'm sad that I can't sing because if I was ever in a situation like that, I can't help you. I'm sorry. You're just going to sit there. I'm sure you would just get up and do it and help. I don't think I would. That's how bad I am. <laughs> I'd send somebody else up. Go help them. I couldn't do it. Hmm. But it was that was a very sweet moment. And the fact that he remembered it the following year in 2018 made it all the more special. Yeah. I like that we're kind of covering both of them at the same time right now. Just some it of works. Them, they do cross over they a cross. lot. Yes. Robert punching out Valentine was fun. Mm-hmm. It was fun. I like the way you say that. <laughs> and there was a cameo by Carla Hall, who was a chef from The Chew. Yes. That felt okay, even though you knew she wasn't a regular. That mm -hmm. felt okay because Olivia really wants that kitchen. Yes. So. Oh, and I did want to give Kim some props because you know how we love to break HIPAA on the show. Yes. When she stood up from the table and said, one of my patients is having a preemie. Yes. She did not say Maxi. Yes. I noticed that too. Good job. Yay, Kim. Yeah. Good job. Following those rules. That could be the gold star for the week. 
Gold star, Kim. Did not break the rules. And then our sister finale, I liked that. I'll be your champion. Mm -hmm. Could not find who wrote it, who originally sang it, or anything. But it was good. It was good. I like all the nurses together. And then at the very end of 2018's episode, it said, in memory of Rick Pesagno, Mm -hmm. he was the choreographer for the nurses' ball since it's resurgence oh wow yeah so he did through 2018 he was actually a broadway performer who appeared in nine to five the musical 42nd street and Whoopi. he worked with gh to choreograph the unforgettable musical numbers for the annual nurses ball for the past six years and there was an article that i read about it on soaps in depth and i'll put that in the show notes but it talks a little bit more about him so that's that's why it was dedicated to him and i mean he would have just finished it yeah. So. Kind of sad. But I like how they do that. I love mm-hmm. how they acknowledge the people who matter off stage too. And in 2019, they brought in two new choreographers, Dana Salamando and Sarah Lowe. Not sure if they're going to be able to do anything this year. They have to. The Nurses Ball is the best. And they're already building up to it. We yeah. have them talking about it. That's true. I mean, I guess they could say. Because of COVID, we didn't get the Nurses Ball. Or the ballroom flooded or something. I mean, they can make up any excuse Mm -hmm. to not have it, but I really hope they don't because that's the best episodes. Mm -hmm. So 2019, you got to meet Lucy Salama again. Cam's conversation with that llama was so heartbreaking though. It was so funny, but it's so weird. It's just the llama backstage. (laughs) Yes. And he he talked the llama through. I'm going to grab your rope now. So we're going to see where you belong. But he really opened up to it. It was, it was just heartbreaking to watch him. Do you want a llama to talk to? You can be your new therapist. There you go. I've always talk wanted a llama. llama. I think we talked about this when we redid, when we talked about the I nurses' think, ball. Yes. Because yes. ever since I saw Rex Harrison's Dr. Doolittle, and it was a push me, pull you, and it was two llamas, and they were back to back, but they were one animal. I know that that's not a real thing. <laughs> Are you going to order a unicorn too, Shannon? But I've Ooh, always that's... wanted a llama since I, I was like, they're really cute. And then I saw what an actual llama looked like, mm-hmm. and I just always wanted one. So yes, I would like a llama. Thank you. Emily can help you take care of it. She went to camp and had a llama. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yep. I also made a side note that they totally dropped the ball with Neil's background with his daughter. Yeah. Like that would have been a great storyline. Yep. For us to keep going with. At any point in time, they could give us that storyline though. They need to hand it over. Mm -hmm. Oh, I liked them switching the engagement rings for Mike and Yvonne. Yeah. That was cute. And I, I like that Sunny, I'm not a fan of lying, but like that was... It needed to happen. Yes. You know, and. And she liked the new ring better. So that was all that matters. So it was cute. And Finn proposed. And Anna said yes. Even though he didn't really want to propose. That was a jerky move of Robert's. But but that's what we were talking about. And we'll talk about on Thursday's episode with our, the fan interview is we were talking about how people still want Robert and Anna and oh, they could. No, that, they're done. Anna very easily could have chosen Robert when she thought he was going to propose. And Robert tossed out the ring for Finn to propose. Right. No, they're definitely done. You know, he didn't, because I watched it and I was like, okay, he didn't just like tap him like, hey, get out there. It was no, he tossed the ring. Yeah. He made sure that that ring went out into right. the- Right. You had no choice. You're going to go do this. Yeah. Oh, why wasn't Trina there? I don't know. <laughs> and I don't know why that never occurred to me before. I don't she's never been at the nurse's ball? That. She's never been at the nurse's ball, but especially last year, because Cameron sang that song and the pictures that flipped through mm-hmm. in the back- had the four of them together Mm -hmm. but she wasn't there i don't know and conveniently now her mother's a doctor right i guess before she was at mercy right isn't that how they said it oh maybe that's why then i still feel like she she wasn't supporting another hospital's no i still feel like she would have gone or she should have been there with joss and christina yeah keeping her friend company right and either one of those would have been fine but no, we just didn't see her that day at all. No. I was really thinking about how difficult it has to be for Kathleen. Is it Gady? I think so. Okay. To sing like Obrecht because she does not have that accent. I know. But she carries it through. I mean, she's done three different styles of songs mm-hmm. with that accent consistently. Yeah. She's awesome. She is awesome. And her with Franco was just adorable. Yes. yes. Not that she's not always good, but this year she was supposed to be there and had her whole thing all laid out the way it was supposed to go. And that was cute. And it surprised Liz, which was cute. Yes. That was when Franklin and Liz were really cute, too. Yes. Well, they're still really cute. Eh, they're losing their cuteness. Just because they didn't explain their money issues. But I feel like, unless they're talking about the kids or money issues, 
there's nothing going on with them. He just gave her that really cute Mother's Day present with the art supplies all over the house. Okay, he is a little bit still in the doghouse from saying that she's not actually an artist, right? But he did give her, like, that scavenger hunt. That was fun. Or was that Valentine's Day? I thought that was Valentine's Day. Okay, Valentine's Day. I don't even know anymore. It's been... I thought that was Valentine's Day, but... I mean, I'm not saying they've lost it completely. They're not headed to divorce court, but they're not as cute as they used to be. I don't know. Well, it happens. Uh, in soap world, it shouldn't. I want excitement all the time. Chase and Willow were uh, anything perfect. with Chase. <laughs> I didn't even need Willow in that. Just keep Chase. Oh, but they were good. Just perfect. They were so cute. We know you love them. They're adorable. It's not just me. But people love them. I would have been okay with Chase. But then who would he be talking to? He wouldn't be singing to anybody. She could have just stayed in her seat. That was okay. He didn't need to bring her out. But it was so cute. It was cute. And her dress is pretty. I like yes. how sparkly and pretty that was. Yes. Well, I loved Ava's dress. It was a very... Oh, with the... the on the sleeves. Yeah, yeah. I liked that. That was pretty. Yes. And back to Cameron's song, it was North Star, and it was written by William Clifton. So cute. Mm -hmm. And like we said before, A List of Things to Do was written by Fido Xavier, General Hospital Director. Oh, and at the very end, in her final speech, Lucy thanked Donna and Dale, and they know why. Donna is, as we've talked about before, baby Donna's namesake and the makeup artist mm -hmm. who had just recently passed away. And Dale was a cameraman who had recently retired. Aww. So that's really sweet. I love that they do that stuff. Yes. Is there anything else to talk about? Not really. I mean, everyone performed. It was nice that Joss actually ended up performing. I like that song, but we kind of already covered that. There's not really... That was a nice way to end the nurse's ball, yes. though. I did like that she went last. Yes. And that's when we see Lucas putting two and two together, that Willow and Shiloh are Wiley's parents. And why are we still having this? Yeah. I mean, now we have a reason why, because it's been postponed. Right. But come on, guys. Yeah, a whole year to figure that all out. That's too much. Mm-hmm. If they just done a DNA test on Willow. Yeah, exactly. Which only makes sense that they would have before Especially they where they went to anything. court. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I'm with you. Obviously, they didn't want it to go that way. But I don't feel like you get to just claim some child because dates match or whatever. Right. And I know they changed the paperwork, but still. Still. Yeah. I would have done a DNA. So, oh, Ned and Olivia performed that year, too. And they oh, yeah. Better. Closer to me, closer to you. That was okay. Yeah. I don't have anything else. Oh, Ava, it was 2018 that she did You Don't Own Me, right? Yes. I liked that. And you know what I wrote? I was like, I feel like I didn't like that when she did it the first time. Mm -hmm. But I really liked it watching it back. But then I was like, maybe it was 2019 that I didn't like. I can't remember what she even saying. I know it was, no, that wasn't the one they said that wasn't what she rehearsed. That was 2018. Yeah. Oh, 2019 was whenever she climbed up on the piano. Yes. And we thought the martini was going to be poisoned. Yes. Can't take my eyes off of you. There you go. Yeah, I liked You Don't Only Me Better than Can't Take My Eyes Off You. Yes. I mean, she was good in both. Yeah. I thought it was really interesting that in 2018, she was dressed head to toe in white. And then 2019, she was all black. I did not. Pay attention to that. Good mm -hmm. job. I don't know what it means, but... I thought it was weird that they made it so difficult for Jocelyn to perform without Oscar. And I know that his death was super recent. They never brought up the fact that Ava would be sad that Kiki wasn't at the nurse's ball. Right. Especially where she was the year before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hear you. But no, I don't got anything else. And if so, I'm sure I said it in the nurse's ball the first time we did them. <laughs> this was different than how we did it, though, last it was. time. Because yeah, we didn't get so specific last time. No, we just kind of did a recap. Of and yeah, exactly. Well, with that being said. <laughs> reality check. Are you going first? Or you want me to I go can first? go first. Go ahead. I mean, it was. Tell us all your excitement. My kids were with their dad for the week and we did nothing. I mean, we got some projects done around the house and everything, but it was not. I saw you had date night last we night. We had date night on Friday or night. Friday we went night? to Longhorn right. because I found my gift card that I was given for my birthday in September. Okay. I mean, really, there was not a lot going on this week. My husband's aunt passed away this morning. She was sick for a really long time, though. Like, she had multiple heart valve transplants and she had beat cancer before. So all in all, I mean, she she hung in there. Yeah. You know? I guess when he was in high school, they had thrown a part birthday party for her and they didn't think that she was going to be Aww. around much more. And it's 20 something years later. Right. So 
I mean, we knew because she got moved to home hospice last week. So we knew it was coming, but she was just awesome. So that's sad. There's never a good time. No. But if she's been through all that, I'm sure she was ready. Yeah. Oh, and I'm planning a virtual 5K. That's a lot so of work. So if you're in the Pittsburgh, Rhode Island, slash Massachusetts, Tulsa, Oklahoma City, or Denver locations, we're doing a virtual 5K. We are having some women meet up in person at different locations. I'll put the information in the show notes. But if you just want to virtually walk where you are, you know, just go on like your own little 5K and everything to support it. Um, we're helping a women-owned business that was negatively impacted because of Corona virus mm-hmm. and we're going to donate all the proceeds to her and she actually a portion of her profits and sends it and helps formerly incarcerated women get back in the workforce oh how awesome. so that was a nice little first we just liked her business and everything right. she makes the name of her business is called that's my jam okay. and it's boozy jams oh my god and they're all named after so like there's strawberry fields forever there's painted black there's you can get a tupac <laughs> Which is like smaller, like little sample jars. Yeah. And it's two pack, but it says two pack. So, I mean, she's really, really creative and everything. So we're going to help her. That sounds get awesome. Back up and running. So yeah, that's it. So cute. I don't have anything that exciting. <laughs> the kids spent a lot of time with their grandmas this week. So it was drop this kid off. We'll now pick up this kid. We'll now drop off that kid. Back and forth, back and forth. So I don't think I had all three of them at once Mm -hmm. at all this week, which is always fun because then there's less fighting and arguing and whatever. So that was good. Yeah, really nothing. Cool. Yeah, I'm so boring, (laughs) but nothing. Nothing good, nothing bad. Like, there you go. I'll take that. No news is good news. I don't know. Yeah. I have nothing. This is like the nice summer lull, though. You don't have to be anywhere at certain times. You don't have to do anything. As far as the kids go, for the most part, they don't have any crazy classes that they're in or anything like that. So it's all just kind of hang out and do whatever. Cool. Anything else? No, not really. <laughs> all right. Well, then with that, have a good week. You- <laughs> we'll meet you at the pier. <laughs> Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to peer54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Peer 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect. So if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com. 